What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the First Person Shooter Tutorial Series, we're going to be going over finishing up our basic death and respawn system. Earlier in the series, we had implemented death and respawning, which was basically once we lost all of our health, we would immediately respawn. In the previous episode, we implemented true death, so instead of just dying and immediately respawning in the exact position, once we die, we played a death animation and we got stuck there. Now, I'm having us respawn, so we teleport back to the last checkpoint or last spawn location. We play an animation getting up, and then we can move around and go about our day. You have a ton of ways you can handle death and respawn, so you can take the ideas that you see in this video and change them to fit whatever system you want to implement, or use whatever animations you want to implement. And before we get started in this episode, I'd love to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I'm really grateful for it, and this series is such a blast to work on, so I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. If you'd like to get caught up in the series, you can click this icon in the top right corner right here. It is a playlist to all my first-person shooter tutorial episodes, so you can see everything we did and how we got here. Alternatively, if you'd just like to learn about death and respawning, then you can check out this episode right here, which is where we implemented the initial logic for it. And we're going to be editing that today, so it is useful that you have knowledge of that so that you don't have to go back and look at it later. Let's go ahead and get started. So starting out today, this is a code and a blueprint tutorial, so we're going to start in the code. I'm going to go to my FPS tutorial character .h, which is my base character for my game. Now, like I mentioned earlier, before in the series, our respawn was instant. So we didn't have an animation that played, we didn't have any timer between respawn and death. We just would die and then immediately teleport back to the last location that we had set. But we want to adjust this now to make sure that we have some time after death to play a death animation. Then we also play a respawn animation and stop the character from doing things that we don't want them to do during that time. So to have a timer, we can make an actual timer handle in Unreal that I'm calling respawn timer handle. So scroll down to my variables and made a new F timer handle called respawn timer handle. It's going to keep track of our respawning so that we know how much time has passed after we died and what to do once our timer finishes. So once our timer finishes, that is when we are actually going to respawn. Also note that this variable is not a U property. We don't need it in the blueprint. We're going to use it strictly in the code. Now, additionally to the handle, we need the actual duration before respawn. So the handle will keep track of everything related to the timer, but we still need an actual time between death and respawn. So I'm gonna scroll up to my floats and I've made a variable called respawn delay and is the time between death and respawning. I made this one of you property so that we can access it in the blueprints and use it if we want to. You don't have to, but it is useful if you wanna display the amount of time left until the character respawns to the player or other things like that. Again, this is just float respawn delay, and this is going to be how long it takes after dying to respawn. The last thing that we'll need is our respawn function. Now, I've actually already created this, but we commented it out in the previous episode. We're going to be using this today, so make sure you have that. At this point, we can go into our FPS tutorial character.cpp, and we can scroll down to our constructor. What we want to do here is make sure that we set our respawn delay variable. I am setting it to 3.0, which evaluates to 3 seconds. So when we start the timer, we will use our respawn delay, and we will wait 3 seconds until we call the respawn function. You can change this value to be whatever you want. And there's something interesting I'm going to do with the respawn location that is below it. So the respawn location we set up in the first episode of Dying and Respawning. And this was just an arbitrary location that we were respawning the character at after death. If we go into our editor, you can see that our character, this is my base character BP, this is the character that would be calling that function, has these values, negative 520, negative 20, and 266 as my X, Y, and Z. So the values in the constructor for that respawn location didn't line up. So it wasn't like that. It was literally just a random value that we had in here. And this is where we were going to respawn the character. However, we may want to respawn the character at an actual checkpoint location or at an actual value that we assign in the world. And so the constructor 
will fire before begin play. This is important because the constructor fires when this object is created. So the respawn location is going to be set to this value initially. But if we wanted to grab an object in the world, the constructor would be too early. Begin play is after the character has spawned and actually been placed where they are in the scene. And we won't have that in the constructor. So if we want to set an actual checkpoint, say based on the location that we're currently at in the world, we'll have to do that in the begin play function. So it's fine to have a default respawn location if you want. I'm going to actually zero mine out. You don't have to do this. It's not required. But just in case we ever have to use the location from the constructor, I might as well default that to all zeros. And we will know if something goes wrong because the character will spawn at a random all zero location when they're not supposed to. So to me, this is better than having arbitrary values, especially as the system progresses. Now going to the begin play function, we had already overridden the begin play function but we only called super begin play in here. So if you haven't done this, I'll go over this quickly. But if we go back to our FPS tutorial character.h, we can override functions that we have in parent classes. So you see the FPS tutorial character is a child of the character class. The character class has a function begin play, and you might have seen this in the blueprint or other code classes. So we had overridden this before just so that we could edit and use things in begin play. The way to do that is to type virtual before the name of the function. So virtual void begin play. And actually I wanna write override here. This is the standard way to write a virtual function or to override a function. So we write virtual, and then the return type, the name of the function, and then override. So we're overriding begin play. Again, we had already done this, so you probably already have this set up. But if you don't, go ahead and write void a FPS throw a character, colon, colon, begin play, and call super begin play. This will make sure that when this character's begin play fires, we call the parent character's begin play. Now the character class's begin play does a lot of things that we are going to want on this character. So we don't want to just override the function and then ignore the parent class. We need to make sure we call super begin play. Now what's new about this function is I've set the respawn location in here as well. So we do have a default respawn location in the constructor as soon as the character is created. But once the character is spawned, we can also set the respawn location to the actual location that they are at in the world. So we'll grab this X, Y, and Z. And if we do this, when we die, we will respawn back at this location. Essentially, this is a checkpoint. We haven't gone over checkpoints, but this is exactly how they can work. You can pass a point and it can save out the exact details about that point and you can reload or be respawned at that spot. So I'm just setting the respawn location equal to the get actor location on begin play. So once the character is spawned, grab their initial location and set that as the respawn location. Now the next thing we wanna do is scroll down to our die function. So I'm going all the way down to die. In the previous episode, we had common out our respawn call. So when we die, we don't call respawn at all. Well, we're not going to comment that back in. We want to call our respawn function after a given amount of time. So go to wherever your commented out respawn function call is. I'm going to get rid of that. And instead, I'm going to replace it with this line right here. It's going to do essentially the same thing. But again, it's just going to call it after a short delay. So what we can do is start a timer using our timer handle and our delay and then call a function. So we have get world, which is pretty much what it sounds like. It gets the world. In this case, it's typically the level or the streaming environment that you have. And we're going to get the timer manager there. These are functions that come with Unreal. I did not make them. They are just automatically here for you to access. So you can get the world, get the timer manager, and call set timer on it. Now set timer takes in quite a few parameters, so I'm going to go over them. The first one is the timer handle. This is how you can reference things about the timer. So you can see how far along you are, you can pause the timer, you can stop the timer. Basically the timer handle will allow you to communicate with the timer that exists within Unreal using your own variable here. The next parameter is this, and this is what object is this timer going to be called on. This represents the actual class object that we're in. 
So we are controlling an FPS tutorial character. It is this character that we want to call respawn on. So this is the keyword that we pass in to that object reference. Then you get to the function that is going to be called when this time runs out, and that is the respawn function. Again, we have already set up the respawn function in previous episodes. Feel free to use my respawn function here if you haven't set yours up based on this series or the same way that I have. But regardless, you just need a function to call and we already have this respawn function, but you do have to write it out like this because the timer class doesn't automatically know that it's going to be from this class because you could actually call a function from a different class. So you have to call it like this ampersand the name of the class colon colon and then the function name. The fourth parameter here is the amount of time that the timer will run until it is complete. And once it's complete, it will call this function. So we need to pass in our respawn delay for that parameter. And the last parameter is if this timer will automatically repeat once it finishes. So if we wanted to do something continuously every three seconds, we would set this to be true, but we don't want that. We want the respawn to happen once the character dies and that's it. We don't want to keep respawning them after that. So we're going to set false for that parameter. Now, after three seconds, we'll call the respawn function. Again, I've already set up the respawn function. Nothing even needs to change about it, but I do want to change one little thing just because for me, I think it makes more sense. And I'm going to switch these two lines, the health equals 1.0 and the set actor location. Now, how I did that is by pressing Alt and an arrow key. You can actually move lines of code up and down in Visual Studio. Not required that you know that, but it's a helpful shortcut that you can do. But otherwise, just copy or paste or rewrite the lines. I just want to set the actor location before we set the health to 1.0. It's going to happen so quickly, you can't even tell. But from a logical standpoint, I would like the character to be moved to the location before we start refilling their health and doing other things related to the respawn. All right, now at this point we are done in the code and we can go into the blueprint. We don't have to do anything in any standard blueprints. We only have to do something in the animation blueprint for today's episode. So open up the anim BP for your character. And here is mine. In the previous episode, I set up a death animation and I had all of these transition rules going to the death state or the dead state. So basically once the character had died, they could go from any of these other animations directly into the dead state. In here, we had this YBot death animation. YBot's the character name, so YB death. And we were already playing that. But now we have a new state that we can go to. Instead of just being stuck in the death animation, we can actually go to the respawn animation now. So we're gonna add a new state, right click, add state. And you can call it whatever you want. I call it respawn, but you could call it getting up or revitalize or whatever. And then in this state, I have an animation YB respawn, which is the character getting up. It's very slow. Just another Mixamo animation that I have, but the character is getting up and going back to their idle state. Now, this animation, whatever animation you use, you wanna make sure that it is not set to loop because we don't wanna keep playing it upon respawning. We only wanna play it the one time. And I've also gone ahead and changed my play rate to be 3.0, which is three times as fast, but it's not required to do that. This is just because this is a really slow animation. Now, to get to the respawn state, we're going to do the opposite of what got us to the death or dead state. So if we are dead, if the character is dead, we were going to the death animation. But if the character is no longer dead, we want to go to the respawn animation. And so you'll notice in the respawn function, is dead is set to false at the end of it. So once everything is done happening related to the respawn, we say the character is no longer dead. If the character is no longer dead, we want to go into respawn. So quite simply, death to respawn is character reference is dead, not Boolean. So if they're not dead, we can go into the respawn state. This is really simple, but you just grab your character reference, grab is dead, and then you can grab the not bool and plug that into your result. 
Now, I don't have any transition events or anything like that. It's literally that simple. And once we are done respawning, we should be able to go back into the idle state. So I've added a transition rule from respawn to idle as well. But it is set to automatic rule based on sequence player in state. Or essentially, once the respawn animation finishes, since there are no other transitions to go to, it will automatically go to idle. Again, nothing hidden in here. It is that simple. And there you go. That is your death and respawn system fully set up. Now, there's only one thing that you may notice, and that is if we die, we will be stuck and not able to move until we respawn. And once we respawn, we can move during our respawning animation. You may not want this. If you want to wait until the character is finished respawning and they're finished their animation, then you'll want to have a Boolean like can move and set it to false until the character has finished respawning. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters again. Thank you guys for the love and support. And thank you for continuing to give me great ideas to work on for these series. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you out with any problems you ran into. Like I said, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.